And you're listening to Utah Public Radio. I'm Shalane Smith-Needham here in studio with our film guru, Casey T. Allen. Good to have you back, Casey. Thank you. And this week you saw the film, The Call of the Wild. Tell us a bit about it and if you liked it. Based on Jack London's novel, first published in 1903, this book has been the homework for many junior high and high school English students. The Call of the Wild centers on a mischievous domestic dog who is kidnapped from his home, taken to the outskirts of Canada, and sold as a sled dog to work in the unforgiving winter of the Yukon Territory during the gold rush of the 19th century. As various humans pass through his life, the dog learns perseverance and courage in the differing faces of danger, and gradually embraces his wild, ancestral nature. What sets this film adaptation apart from the numerous others in the past is its heavy use of CGI. All the animals are shown through CGI, mainly to give the protagonist dog a wider range of facial expressions. It comes at an interesting time when CGI is a huge subject of criticism for viewers, Enormous picturesque views of the Rocky Mountain wilderness and the northern lights are so saturated with color and so idealized it felt like a visualization of the film's emotional tone. So much CGI, so much pristine natural beauty, and so much happiness make the film feel excessively narrow. But all these elements do work nicely for most of the film, since The Call of the Wild is clearly directed at children and young readers who know the book. All right, a mild recommendation? It was okay. Not superb, but it wasn't a disaster either. I just wish they wouldn't have tried so hard to make it so emotional. Okay, Casey, thank you for being here, and we'll see you back here next week.